I am going to turn it over to our prayer. Uh, I'll call her a prayer practitioner here. Uh, we've got Phil Rigo. And uh, Phil, I've known for many years. She has been here with us on a Sunday before. And Phil is one of our spiritual counselors. <clears throat> she is a, an extraordinary person, a powerful prayer person, and we're very happy to have here, have her here to open us up here with a prayer. Phil Rigo. Thanks, Jennifer. And thanks everyone for joining us in this celebration of love and oneness. And now I'm going to invite you to place your hand on your heart and take that deep breath of love and gratitude. Dear Mother, Father, God, the I am presence, we are so grateful and thankful, thankful to be together in this holy space. We are grateful for this time, grateful for Jennifer and the Power of Love Ministry, all the staff, the volunteers and supporters. We ask you to bless each one of them and to bless each one of us. Bless our speaker, our musician, and all those who are going to listen to, the, to this call later. We are so grateful to partner up with the higher Holy Spirit self. And together we declare that we are the divine extension of love and oneness, extending only love, extending love and gratitude wherever we go. We are so grateful, grateful for our technology and we bless our technology and we bless each breath that we take. We are so grateful to declare our oneness. We are grateful for all that is in our lives. And right now, we bring ourselves just the way we are. And we place ourselves on the holy altar of God's love, knowing that our true identity is love. Our true identity is oneness. We are just as God created us, perfect, whole, and complete. And we are so grateful, grateful for this awareness, this consciousness. And we share this blessing. We share this love with everyone because we are all one. And in deep abiding love and gratitude, we say, Amen. Beautiful. Thank you, Phil. Thank you so much. Oh, appreciate just being able to center into the power of that prayer. And uh, I'm excited to introduce our musician, uh, Clay Pruitt. And uh, first I'm going to read his bio and then I'll tell you a little about my own experience of him. So Clay has been an earnest music maker for over 20 years. Starting with nothing more than a dream of what could be, Clay in 1994, a visual artist at the time, approached Ricky Byers, the dynamic musical director of Agape, with an eye on performing as Agape's musical inspiration. Changed forever by his performance, he eventually went on to adopt music as his chosen profession, counting among his skills, singing guitar, piano, bass, drums, band leader, and musical instruction, helping others with their own musical dream to let it flow out into the world. 
Clay has dig gigged extensively on many different stages throughout the LA area for these past 20 years. Highlights include stints at Harville's Zanzibar, the Cat Club, the Cinema Bar, the annual Altadena Blues concert, as well as several house concerts throughout the area. And uh, Clay and I know each other because, I, you know, I'm not sure when we first met, but um, I one of the great, wonderful things why I asked Clay if you would uh, come and join us on these Sunday services is that uh, when I used to speak at the Healing Revealing Service on Sundays at Agape, uh, you did the music uh, many times. We we were there together, and I always remember that as uh, just a, a, a blessing to hear your music, to hear your voice, and, and the way you share musically. So I really feel honored and blessed that you accepted our invitation and you're here with us today. Thank you, Clay. Can you hear me? Uh, you're a little fuzzy. You're a little fuzzy. Yeah, the microphone is not quite clear. It's a little distorted. But you might say a bit more. Nope. No, nope. it's pretty distorted. Yeah. I'm not sure how to help you. Nope. No. Nope. You know what happens, Clay? I, I've become a Zoom expert, and one of the things I've learned is when there's a sound problem, just leave, close your Zoom, and come back. You don't have to reboot your computer usually. Just close your Zoom and come back. So you, you do that, and we'll hang out here for a minute. I can't really hear you, but I think you're questioning, yes, leave, just quit your Zoom and come right back. Yeah, it usually fixes things, it really does. Zoom is very buggy. And so that's life, right? This is life in the fast lane here, in, in the spiritual fast lane, working with the technology that we have. So grateful that we even have this technology. I've been using Zoom for my classes since 2015, and I have found it to be a tremendous blessing. And, and no technology is perfect. Only we are perfect. Nothing in the world is perfect except us. <laughs> We're perfect. We cannot be improved upon, uh, but technology always can be because it's, it's uh, of this world, and we are not of this world. So that's life. And uh, after Clay, we are gonna have a wonderful talk from Jennifer, Jennifer Ruth Russell. And uh, that's right, Lynn says, nothing real can be threatened, isn't that the truth? And um, uh, Jennifer has been the musical artist here a couple of times on our Sundays with Spirit. So she knows all too well how challenging it is to deal with the sound on Zoom, but we just do the best we can. And, uh, and uh, we, we go with it. And uh, I thank everybody for being here. I love that people are sharing where they're from. We've got people from Hawaii, uh, Alabama, California, state, uh, Gosh, I hope things are good there, David in Monterey. Um, Carol from Maine, yay, and Jennifer from Chicago. And uh, uh, we've got Jane from Arizona. It's wonderful, we've got people from all over. Uh, and I see we've got folks from Europe. I see Kieran Jay there. She's been a speaker here, she's in the UK. And uh, we've got, oh, look, there's, I don't know if it's Libe from Mexico and Scott from Buffalo and uh, Alia from Wisconsin. So aren't we blessed that we have this opportunity to gather together? 
Um, one of the things that I can mention to you, I'm just going to take this moment while we're waiting for Clay to come back. And um, uh, Christine, I'm sure you're watching for Clay's returns because he, he is back. We just need to uh, unmute him, make him a co-host there. Um, I don't know if I can do that myself. Oh, okay. okay. Sorry, Jennifer. Yeah, I see. All right. So let's see if uh, you can get him unmuted and then we can see how he's doing there. And, um, yep. We're can working. you hear me? Yes. Hear me? Go. You sound good now. Good? Okay. All right. Good. <laughs> the, the miracle fix was Zoom. Leave and come back. All right. It works in relationships sometimes too. Wonderful. Okay. Hi, Jen. Um, well, it's been about a decade, I think, at least. Are you, you're in Rhode Island? Did you go to Rhode Island? That just came to me, right? No, I, I grew up in Rhode Island. I'm in Vermont now. You're in Vermont. I, I knew that. I knew that. Okay. Hi, all. Thanks for being patient. Uh, and thank you so much for uh, inviting me, Jen. It's uh, uh, a deep honor, and I was really excited to get the offer, the call from uh, Susan, who I see also. Hi, Susan. And so here we go. Can you hear the guitar, everyone? Okay, good. Hi, 
We're rocking here today. Thank you so much, Clay. Was, they, was the guitar not too loud? Were you able to hear everything? That's Was the guitar too loud or not low enough, or was it just right? Well, we can talk about that, that later. Let me, let me introduce Jennifer and, uh, and, and get, get her um, centered and focused here. So uh, we have uh, my dear friend, Jennifer Ruth Russell here today as our speaker. As I said, she's been the musical guest a couple of times. And Jennifer is the Angels of Abundance Ascension Academy. She's a spiritual mentor and an award-winning songwriter, an author, and a podcaster. Jennifer is passionate about the company of heaven and helping light workers take back their power around money as a light channel for Mother Mary. Everyone can sign up for her morning light meditations at angelsofabundanceascensionacademy.com. That's angelsofabundanceascensionacademy.com. And the Ho'oponopono prayer chant is at jenniferruthrussell.com, which you can get for, uh, you sign up for her mailing list and she'll send you the download. And that wonderful song, it's one of my favorite songs, beautiful, beautiful Ho'oponopono chant. Uh, it's wonderful to just put it on uh, heavy rotation and uh, to start your day. It's one of the things I like to do with it. And I'll also mention, because we have a bunch of people from Masterful Living here, that Jennifer was in the very first Masterful Living group back in 2009. And uh, Jennifer, I'm just so glad to hear your inspiration today. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much for inviting me, Jennifer Hadley. I was just going through the years and uh, just thinking of how many, how many times we have danced and, and woven in spirit together and how much you've influenced my life a lot. It's so good to see you, Clay. And, uh, you know, shout out to you for, you know, getting the Zoom sound together. I know it's, a, it's definitely a challenge for us musicians. And <laughs> I appreciate that. <clears throat> Well, I have to just say that I was in the first Masterful Living uh, class, and you know what? We started in LA, and we met every month. We were able to meet live once a month in a beautiful, uh, Anita's beautiful home in Mulholland Drive up there, and uh, I'm actually going to tell you a story from there, but that'll come later. And Jennifer took my hand one day at Agape and said, I want to, I want to show you some things around the mystical world, and she really changed my life. She helped me step into a whole other dimension. She gave me a book, uh, The Seven Sacred Flames. And that book absolutely was like food for my hungry soul that I didn't even know was missing. Have you ever experienced that when there's something that comes in your life and you go, wow, the whole company of heaven opened up for me. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you so much for that. And, um, I couldn't get enough of it. And I heard one day, I heard uh, on my patio here in LA, I heard, it's time for you to start teaching this stuff. And this is a love story because I said, okay. And I invited some people to come to a free class. About seven people showed up. And so I said, well, that's interesting because I, you know, beloved, you're, 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 you're calling me to do this. And two weeks later, somebody called me and said, you know, I, I, I was at your class, but I had to go to Mexico for a couple of weeks and I just got back and I wonder if you're still teaching that class. And I said, you know what, if you can find two other people, let's do it. And we did. And that was the first class. And that, that idea has grown and grown into now a full-blown academy where we really get clear about our part in the company of heaven. So I'm telling you this because I really want you to get ready for an angelic miracle today. We're going to talk about a new faith currency, and I'm really excited. Of course, I had a whole talk going, and about an hour and a half ago, it's like, nope, we're going this direction. So here we go. <laughs> here we go. Can you hear me all right? Okay, good. All right, great. So if you would, we're just going to close our eyes and go back within. And thank you, Phil, for that beautiful setup for us today. But I want you 
to really connect now with that personal beloved presence. I call the I am presence, your high holy self. Taking the breath into the heart of that sacred heart oneness. And I want you to call in your guardian angel. Everyone has one. If you have any interaction with this beautiful being of light or not, I want you to just gently invite them to be with you now because they open up the angelic realm. Oh, and I'm going to speak a prayer. It's a little different than affirmative prayer. It's, I call it empowered prayer because I really believe it's time now for us to start opening up to this new way of being and new way of creating. So if I say some names that you don't recognize, just let it flow over you. <laughs> so how grateful I am to step into the true divine authority of my I am presence. And it is from this place of my divine authority that I call for that octave of the angelic host, that miracle authority. And I call for that miracle authority to descend upon each one of us right here and now. And I demand that descent of the sacred fire eternal love to flood each heart. I call in for financial healing for each one of us here and for the entire world because it is time for us to go beyond. And I am so grateful that it is already done. And I am charging this time with God's perfection. I'm so grateful. I am so very grateful. And I call upon you, beloved Archangel Michael, to surround each one of us in that divine protective light. Charge us with your invincible protection, all powerful and impenetrable. Thank you, beloved. And thank you, beloved Mother Mary. Just open up my heart to you. And I invite you all to open up your heart to beloved Mother Mary. If you don't know Mother Mary, just know she is the queen of angels. So you cannot go wrong. Mother Mary doesn't really care if you don't know about her yet. It's all right. <laughs> just opening up our hearts to feel that presence of the angelic realm right here and now. It is so good. I am so grateful and so blessed. Beloved I am. Beloved I am. Beloved I am. So today I want to talk about this new faith currency, and it's so much to do with where we just started here. Oh my goodness. It's time for us to go beyond what we know, and the reason I believe that each one of us needs to have a financial healing, because if you had all the money in the world, it wouldn't really change that much. I know we think it is. If I only had the money, <laughs> if I only had the money, this would happen. But I have to tell you that there is a new faith currency coming in. I can't really tell you exactly the details of it, but it's been working within me in this form of creation. And I want to talk about it today because I think it's so powerful. We're going to talk about precipitation. Now, precipitation is an old word, but it actually means manifestation, but more. It means out of no thing, something is created. I know Reverend Michael speaks that way. Um, you know, I think that's the first place that I heard it. Out of, out of nothing, something was created. That's precipitation. It's out of the very substance of God, we step into our creatorship. So I want to begin. Uh, Mother Mary's brought a couple books, so I'm going to read through me. So I'm going to bring this book, 21 Days to Abundance to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And I want to read from the foreword that she's written. So just continue to stay in this deep, receptive mode and listen. She says, Mother Sophia has always provided everything for her beloved children. Mankind has been toiling in a barren field for so long. And this field is of your own making and doesn't produce an everlasting harvest. It is time to come home into the fullness of her embrace to lay down your arms of struggle from your little self and surrender into the tender love and intimacy of her lavish care. I love that. And I want you to just feel into your life right now 
of what does feel like it is in still in the barren land. Where is it that you feel that spirit is withholding something from you? And if money comes up right away, I want you to just keep going a little bit deeper. What is underneath that? What, if you had all the money in the world, what is the desire? I think the best way to get in touch with desire is where you up against a wall. When I was up against bankruptcy and foreclosure on our house, I thought it was all about the money, but I made a decision. So get in touch with that desire. What is that desire for you today? And let's take this desire through the first three steps of precipitation, which the beautiful, mighty Elohim have brought to us as an instruction of how to create. All right, so you have a desire now. And if you don't have a desire, I suggest that you keep asking because desires are the seeds of the Father that want to be burst out like babies waiting to be born. And desire is the beginning of all creation. So the first step in creation is a decision. So I want you to make a decision. If your desire, my desire at that time was to come out of this lack and limitation. And so my decision about that was to change my relationship with money. So what is it that you're gonna to decide to do today? I'm gonna to keep putting it back on you because it's, it's we're all doing an inside job here. What is that thing that you really desire? Make a decision. What are you willing to do? Our will is part of this beautiful first ray. It is a blue ray. It is sapphire blue. And guess where it's located? Of course, right here in our throat chakra. Right here. <laughs> what are you willing to do? Because you know when you make a decision, your life is going to change. You're going to be asked to be changed in all those places where you're limiting yourself. Are you willing to do that? This to me is the right use of will, which is this center. It is the, it's the center of our will, divine will. It is the center of omnipotence. It is the center of that place of surrendering to the greater. It is the power of Father God. It is the protection and the provision. Think of Hercules, think of that place of making a choice and standing in the, it's the divine masculine. Think about that. So I want you to make a decision. And after that decision is made, I want you to say, I will. So I want you to just repeat after me. We're going to call Archangel Michael in to help us with this. Come on, Archangel Michael. I just ask that you really help to empower, embolden us in this decision that we have made. So just repeat after me. I will to be, I will to do, I will to become that which God intends. And now say, I will and fill in the blank with your decision. Wonderful. We could spend an hour on each one of these steps, but I'm going to just keep working us through it so you guys will get the first three steps of precipitation of how to create. Because to me, the whole you know economical system that we have is not working. It's falling down. I know a lot of you may be like like we just found out we're losing 75% of our income. So it's like the faith currency that's coming through me is if there was no money in the world, what would we be doing? How would we be creating? What would we be 
creating? What would what we use for money now? What if we could create that without having an exchange we call money? So to me, let's go into the second step. Because the second step of creation is remember who you are. Remembering who you are is this powerful creation of the most high. You came here to remember how to create. This next step, now we used to, okay, I will to do this. I made a decision. Now let's get out the to-do list. Let's go into all the structures in this world that says do this, do that, do this. No. <laughs> the very opposite of that. The second step is to step into the listening to step into that daily practice of illumined wisdom, which is the second ray, the beautiful sunshine yellow ray. And I'm calling on the beautiful archangels, Jophiel and Christine. And isn't it interesting that Christine's other name is Constancy. So these are the archaei, the archaei and the archangel that work on this ray, the second ray of illumined wisdom. They help us bring in the perception of this creation. They also lift us up into that place of wisdom. But the most important part of this, step number two, and we're going to go to the second book, How to Create with Mother Mary and Friends. And I love the subtitle of this, 21 Lessons to Activate Your Creative Magnificence. So you can stop pretending, pretending you're not powerful. So here we go. It's called You Are the Chooser. I'm reading day one, lesson one. There's only one source. You are the chooser and the architect. The one source, Mother, Father, God, is the power, the wisdom, and the love that makes that choice happen. When you release the need to make something happen, the doors open to allow it to happen identify the idea from your heart that desire is first and only place it will remain pure free from the ego you can always check in with us to see if this desire is pure as a pure desire it needs to be protected in that purity kept right there in the innocence of the heart keep your expectations and your disappointments out of it to the best of your ability Release yourself from the position of the doer. Source is the only doer, the doing and the deed. This is key to remember. You have made the choice. Now let it be. Love the desire and give thanks for it daily. Nurture it in prayer and belief. In this creation stage of a desire, it is best to release the outcome on the earth level and keep turning it over to your beloved I am presence. The opportunity for healing here is great. As you take your thoughts off of the outcome, you are allowing the old pain and frustrations of miscreating and not manifesting to rise out of the ashes of your entire being. I love and adore you, Mother Mary and the angels of abundance. So this number two, remembering who you are, you may, we are the choosers. This to me is what prayer is for. What are you choosing? And when you come up against something that is in opposition to your desire, it's time for you to choose again. Choose again and again and again and again. Don't give up on your desire. Keep on and keep listening in that beautiful Illumined Wisdom, which is located, as you know, right here, the crown chakra. Keep listening and hearing for the divine ideas. This is how I built my academy. It works. It's so incredibly simple. The hardest part for me is to stay out of a doer because I'm a doer. I get things done, you know? So for me, it's, it takes a lot of discipline for me to continue to choose again and to let go. All right, we get to move to number three now. I'm trying to see how I'm doing in time. I think I'm doing good. So the third comes right from our heart, right? It is that crystalline pink ray of unconditional love. Unconditional love 
nurtures this desire, this decision. It is that beautiful ray of the Holy Spirit, the divine feminine, that fuel that glues it together. Nothing is sustained without love. If you're trying to create something from that struggle and hard work vibration, it's going to continue to be that for you. But you need to start loving what you're creating. It's the fuel. It brings into manifestation that which you love. Gratitude is part of this ray as, as well. Continuing to be grateful, 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 grateful. And I love the beautiful archangels on this ray, Samuel and Charity. Samuel brought this beautiful decree. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. He is the archangel of adoration. Adoration to me goes way beyond what we know about love. It's like, can you adore this desire that you have? Can you adore this decision? Can you stay in that place of open awareness? So I have a wonderful story, and of course it includes Jennifer Hadley as well, <laughs> about how this process happened before I even knew about deliberately using it. And we're going to do a short meditation right after this. Just a short time of you being able to, to bring all this together. I had written a whole bunch of children's music. And at the same time, we were going in through bankruptcy and foreclosure on our house. Everything that I thought I was using Archangel, Archangel Michael, you know, Reverend Michael's visioning process, taking my music into schools, and everything was just falling apart. Everything fell about apart. Same time, I was in mass living. And I, have, I decided to start my first CD, Big People CD, One With The One. And I was amazed because I would start booking musicians that I wanted to play on this and they would come in. They would come. There would be money for them when I needed them. And then I was asked to sing at Agape on a Sunday morning. And I was, of course, my first question like was, what am I going to wear? Because I was now becoming more visible and I had no idea what to wear. And I have to premise this was I was raised in Ethiopia, in East Africa. I was a missionary child. We just got stuff out of the barrel. There was, I didn't go through that teenage thing of going shopping, figuring out what to wear. And, you know, I didn't do that whole thing. I, I missed that whole, that whole experience. So, during this time, I had about three weeks, and Jennifer Hadley invited me to come to an evening with Jennifer Butler. Now, Jennifer Butler, she's famous in LA, and there's probably many more places, but she helps celebrities, and she helped a lot of people at Agape, including Reverend Michael and, and Jennifer Hadley, to what is your color? What is your essence? And I was fascinated by her. You know, I went for that evening with her, and I was like, on the way home going, Nope, don't even think about it. You're in, you're in the process of, you know, bankruptcy. What do you think? You're going to be fishing out some money. Where is it going to come from? You know, all these doubts came and I started in battle. I was in battle with this desire. I was like, no, no, no. And the resistance, of course, didn't help at all. <laughs> and after about three, three hours of this, this battle, I just surrendered. I gave it over. I said, okay, I see you. I see you, beloved desire. I have no idea what to do with you, but I'm going to give you to my beloved I am present. I'm going to give you in complete surrender. And I let go. And of course, immediately went into peace. As, as, and two days later, we were meeting together. Now, I drove with a beautiful presence. Her name is Jenna. And she was such a love. And we would drive together. It was about a 35-minute drive for us to get to that wonderful Anita's house in, in the hills, Hollywood Hills. And we were chatting about the class, you know, and, and everything as we get there. Who should be the special guest for the day but Jennifer Butler? <laughs> there she was right in front of me. So I was like, okay, I guess this is another opportunity for me to just love this desire. And we happened to be in a dyad together where there's only two people and we had some sharing to do. And I was able to just give her my love and appreciation and tell her how much I loved 
her work and I looked forward to working with her someday. And that was the extent of that. And so as we were getting ready to leave that day, there was just a few of us left cleaning up and putting things away and getting the house in order. And I just said out loud, I said, you know, hold me in prayer. I really want to work with Jennifer Butler and I really, I really need to manifest a thousand dollars. And it felt light and easy. It just felt very, very good to say that out loud out loud. So we're driving back home. And Jenna said, you know, last time we came up here, I was asking you about vocal lessons and you kind of blew me off. But I'm wondering if you'd reconsider because I want to know how many lessons a thousand dollars would get me. <laughs> and that's, that's that beautiful story. The end of that story, I didn't even realize what a healing it would be for me as an artist becoming visible in this world, which all of us light workers have to do, by the way, become visible because people need our gifts more than ever before. So do we have time, uh, Reverend Jennifer, for about five minutes of just steeping into a little meditation here? Or do we need to? Well, that is the thing that we do next. I, uh, I usually lead a guided meditation, but you can do that. Okay, thank you. I, I, I appreciate that privilege. Awesome. So, oh, so once again, and I will let you just lead us out of the meditation, Reverend Jennifer, whenever you feel like it's time, because we'll be going into a little bit of silence. I want you to come once again into your heart and bring this beautiful desi desire and decision that you've made today. And it can really be about anything. Just ask your beloved guardian angel to help you feel into this because the angels work with our feeling tone. They work with our emotional body. And I want you to just feel into this desire as if it almost has a voice, which it does. Saying, feel me, feel me, see me. Wake up to me. Just keep breathing deeply and fully, allowing your out breaths to be as long as your in breath. Keep your hand on your heart. It's a good way to just stay here. Try to stay very still in the listening mode. Awake to me. Claim me, claim me, claim me now. Claim me as your very own. Claim me continually so that I may be birthed. Birth me. And continue to nurture me as you would a baby. Nurture me. Stand by me. Choose me again and again and again. Choose me again and again. Let me grow. 
into complete form. Resist the temptation to doubt me. Heal that doubt when it comes up. Heal any fears around me. Please choose me again and again. For you are a powerful creator. I love you. I love you. So from this place of allowing ourselves to recognize and energize our heart's desires, we're allowing ourselves to play with spirit. And we're opening ourselves to the highest possibilities for ourselves, recognizing that the highest and best for us has to be the highest and best for everyone because we're one. It's not possible for the highest and best for one person to in any way cause hardship for another because we're one. How wonderful that we can freely know and choose the highest and best in our life, in our relationships, in our finances, in the healing of our body, in the awakening of our mind, in the expressions of our creativity. All the areas of our life we can express and know and reveal and share the highest and best for ourselves, absolutely knowing without a doubt that this brings benefit to all. When one is lifted, all are lifted. And so we are choosing to be lifted this day. And in this moment of rising up, you may notice some resistance, some reluctance, some thought that seems like it's pulling you back, holding you back, it's keeping you from the expansion, whatever that thought might be. It cannot be true. It cannot be true. Thoughts of lack, attack, limitation, and separation 
are always false. And so we can, in this very moment, make a holy offering of the thoughts of lack, attack, limitation, and separation, and allow ourselves to do as we're created to do, which is to be masters of precipitation, calling into being expressions of perfection and beauty and love and joy, that this is our spiritual duty. This is the impetus that is given to all of us from heaven itself. Our very highest nature is to bring into manifestation the greatest expressions of love and beauty and wisdom and clarity and harmony and freedom and joy and all of the spiritual qualities. This is our spiritual destiny. And we have everything we need within us. And we are fully supported, as Jennifer has made it so clear, in the invisible. Nothing is against us. Everything is for us. So in this moment, as we're going into this um, wonderful musical reverie with clay, let us marinate in our willingness to truly choose the highest and best and to surrender all thoughts of lack and limitation. Clay? Can you hear me? Yes. was flying so high, but then I awoke from this dream, and I felt oh so earthbound. dreams and just then the sky it opened and a voice said to me Brother, don't you worry. I know that you think you're far from your dreams. But all you seek is in you now, waiting for you to claim it. I know it's hard for you to believe Oh, cause when you look all around Your path that seems so broken But if you look a little harder you will see Oh, the changes are a stone that sharpens you to a greater sharpness.
inside you is a path on a shining hill filled with all you could have ever wanted this too you will see oh when you grow when you live and you're willing and able to see it this too you will see oh when you grow when you live and you're willing and able to see it be not a friend cause change comes to ye that need it just live for each day as if it was an exercise of faith be not afraid oh cause change comes to ye that need it just live for each day as if it was an exercise of faith. Oh, it said, I know that you're aching. It said, I know that you're worrying. But just live each day as if it was an exercise of faith. Oh, be not afraid cause change comes to he that needeth just live for each day as if it was an exercise of faith be not afraid cause change comes to he that needeth just live for each day as if it was an exercise of faith. <laughs> Yay! Thank you so much, Clay. Ah. That was so beautiful and so perfect. Thank you, thank you, yeah. Thank you. All right, well now is the point in our Sunday celebration that we do something unique and wonderful that other services don't do, which is we go into a breakout so everybody gets a chance to share, everybody who would like to share gets a chance to share and so, we're going to go into these small group breakouts. You don't have to share if you don't wish to. One of the greatest gifts that we can give to anyone is compassionate listening, really listening from the heart. And so this is an opportunity for that as well. But it's so valuable for us to be able to make declarations and share our intentions and to have an opportunity to be authentic in a safe space. One of the things about Power of Love Ministry and all of our classes, Master of Living, Finding Freedom, everything we do, we practice non-judgment, right? Non-judgment day is here. <laughs> and it's, we practice that every day. That's our liberation, is to have no judgments or opinions. Uh, it really liberates us from anger and blame and shame and all the negativity. So we get to practice that in our breakout. So what I'm gonna invite you to do in the breakout, it's, it's not for very long, but every person in the group can get a couple of minutes to share if they'd like to. So you get to self-manage in your group and we tell you how much time is left so you can see how many people are in your group, how much time for each person so everybody gets a chance to share if they'd like to. And so what I'm going to invite you to talk about in this um, breakout is what did you get as the desire and what are the uh, illusions and delusions that came up as some kind of resistance or reluctance that uh, seems to perhaps be an impediment 
that you're giving to spirit for healing. So what are those two things uh, you can share in the breakout as a guideline for you? So Christine is at the helm here. She's a volunteer to help us out today and she is gonna take us into those breakouts. Okay, I'm gonna open them now. So you'll see a button appear on your um, uh, screen. Just click that button, it'll take you into your breakout room. If you do not see a button, you may look on the bottom bar. Uh, if you're on a computer, uh, maybe if you're on an iPad, there's a bottom bar that you can click on that, uh, where you can see breakout there on the bottom bar and then you can get your breakout room from there. I think that's even possible on a phone. So many different ways to access that breakout button. And so I'll give you another little bit here to find your breakout room button and head off into your breakout. And then for those of us who are here, uh, we are gonna have a discussion for the Facebook Live folks. And uh, so let's, uh, I'm gonna open up this chat here with um, Kieran Jay. Would you like to share anything that you got inspired by from the, um, the talk or the music? Oh yeah, Christine, can you unmute Kieran Jay? Thank you. I don't think I, I don't have that power. There we go. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. And thank you, Jennifer. Thank you both, Jennifers. <laughs> I do feel so inspired. I really do. It's just so beautiful. Wonderful. And uh, Jennifer Russell, when you ask what's the desire? For me, for some years now, it's been exactly the same. It's the deepest, deepest, passionate love that I know. And it's for Jesus. And the prayer is, help me help you. Mm. Help me help you with your most magnificent course. And it is absolutely crystal clear, no doubt, to me that this is what I'm all about. Beautiful. It's just fabulous to, to know that clarity. And so, of course, my life is completely a Course in Miracles and I totally love it. And what came up particularly um, bridging both your, your meditations um, was Jesus' words in the Course uh, saying, do not limit what I can do through you. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I've been with this a fair bit, but it came up big time today. Absolutely big time. It was like Jesus, <laughs> the megaphone, standing on my shoulder saying, do not limit what I can do through you. So, so beautiful. So I'm delightfully with that. And I'd just like to mention uh, the synchronicities. Um, I spent five nights uh, last month at a little village in England where I am, which is famous as a shrine to Mother Mary. Oh, I was very particularly called to go to this place, Little Walsingham, and it was so powerful so beautiful. I felt a deep connection with Mary and it was all about joy. It was like she was saying, because uh, I've had joy in the background now for some time and it was now is the time for joy to come to the foreground and for the clearing to be kind of going off the back but keep joy in the foreground and there's been a little bit of resistance to that but it's it, uh, it's move mountains in me. And the last thing I'll mention, it made me smile. Yesterday, I led a money workshop. <laughs> so I'm right there with money. 
And it was an incredibly powerful magnet to bring issues to the surface. A whole wonderful range of deep issues came winging their way to the surface through using uh, money exercises, thinking of scenarios about money and whoosh, all it came. And within an hour of leading that workshop, I was given guidance to offer it in my general program, because this was for a particular study group. And so it was like, and now do it again. So yeah, very happy to talk, uh, for you to talk about money tonight, to kind of solidify that. So bless you and thank you. Thank you. Thank you and so much. Beautiful music as well. Thank you. <laughs> oh, we're all in the flow, spiraling together. I love it. How about you, Clay? Any thoughts you'd like to share about uh, the sharing from Jennifer? Let's get you unmuted here. Let's see. I think you have to unmute yourself or... There you go. I have some... I did have some thoughts. They, they might surprise uh, some people out there, um, but maybe not. Um, it's interesting in life um, to to realize the useful thoughts that come to you in certain occupations. As we all know, we're in the midst of a global uh, crisis. And so I've been using an awful lot of my time, spending an awful lot of my time in, in the workshop, in the garage. And I'm a metal worker and a woodworker on top of everything else. And one thing I've become keenly aware of when I'm back there are the, the useful thoughts that come to me. Like um, this last, yesterday, um, stuff was not doing what I wanted it to do. Uh, I was welding an enclosure and the welds weren't going the way I wanted to go, or I wasn't able to find this tool or this place over here seems like it's a mess and everything feels like it's really not cooperating with me. And it's really interesting. Thoughts like that are, are, are come to me and, um, over this past year, I've really become aware of the thoughts that come to me when I'm back there tooling and what it really all amounts to all these thoughts are distilled down to the thought that um, I'm not I'm not going to get what I want to get um, it's against me <laughs> the tool is against me the welder is against me time is against me so forth and so on and although I, I, I'm, I'm not going to cop to um, being completely uh, uh, immune to these types of thoughts. I'm not going to say that I have, I've conquered them. I mean, that's not what I'm going to say. But what I am saying is, um, the wonderful thing is to is to be able to be aware of the thoughts, because then you have a choice. Um, you can continue to go with the thought. You can continue to go with the gestalt of that thought, which is lack and opposition, if you choose. Or you can look at the thought, which may always be there, frankly. You know, I, I, I really think that we're not here to, to conquer our, um, our, uh, to conquer our, to conquer our challenges so much as to learn how to deal with them. So, um, I could just as easily make another choice to simply be aware of it and in the moment make another choice. Now, because I can be really type A back there, oftentimes I simply want what I want. But that doesn't mean that I'm not in the midst of a wonderful moment when I am understanding this is what's going on. And, and oftentimes, to be honest with you, I oftentimes do make, most times I think I make the choice to have another thought, a more productive thought. You know, this is for me. Whatever is happening is what I want it to happen. I do deserve to have things happen the way I want it to happen. And, and it does. Uh, it's, it's a challenge sometimes, but that's just, you know, that's just the human condition. That, those were my thoughts. Ah, beautiful. Thank you. It's always, it's always inspiring when somebody just shares authentically and isn't trying to be some spiritual guru. <laughs> I appreciate that. That's great. Thank you. I love that second song you did, Clay. What's the name of that? 
in exercise and faith. I think that is the only the second. I wrote that 15 years ago. That is only the second time I've done it in person, uh, in performance. I, I used to do it a lot in the street. I used to busk on uh, the promenade out in Third Street. I did it quite a bit in the street when I first wrote it. And for some reason, I, you know, I want to do it agape. I think I did it once. And um, I don't know why I haven't. You need to record that song because it's a time. It's a song for now, you know. Yes, you can, it is. You use that song. Thank you. Um, I appreciate that. I you, honestly, last night I wasn't sure what I was going to do, and I just sort of cobbled together a, a, a list of three th songs, and that was one that called out to me. And it was it's all, it feels like the challenge is a difficult song in certain ways, but I really wanted to do it. And I'm happy. I, I woke Perfect. up early to practice it, and I'm I'm happy the way it turned out. Well, we're happy too. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, just perfect for mm -hmm. us right now. Oh my goodness. Good to see you and hear you again, uh, Jennifer, as well. Good to yeah. hear your your story. It's always it's very inspiring to hear uh, uh, fellow creatives. We always have um, similarities to our to our story, and I can mm -hmm. relate to a lot of things that you say. I know I know faith can. Faith and I have spoken, you know, we've spoken many, many, many times about our, how our lives are, are, are similar. Jennifer and myself is, have as well. So it's always very inspiring to, to congregate with, with fellow creatives. Absolutely. Yeah. How about you, Faith? Would you like to share something? Well, I am just um, so happy to be here today and, and with my with my beloveds <laughs> um, as this has really been Jennifer this this services have just been so amazing I just have to say this con con you know congregating together like this and being able to hear the truth of what uh, what uh, Jennifer said and, and Clayton and yourself and uh, all of us and I um, Jennifer said something I see you beloved that just sat with me so much in that uh, meditation. And for me, it is to be more visible as a musical artist. That is my, um, that is that desire. And, and then hearing Jennifer speak about that herself today was amazing. <laughs> I mean, it was so beautiful, such a great synchronicity. And I've been struggling with, um, with trying to trying to do it like like Clayton, you know, like trying to like this is what I want. And I'm trying to. I'm a doer as well. And um, what I realized is that this week, as I would just kind of go to my piano and just kind of let things fly a little bit, like three new ideas for songs came up this week. And it was about not trying to do it, but just kind of like going, oh, here's a cool little idea. And now it's the place for me to say, I see you, beloved. And then to allow that to, to move through me and not stop it. Because that can happen to me sometimes. I'll say, well, it's not this, it's not that, it's not this. And then I'll stop that flow. So thank you for that beautiful uh, meditation, which I will listen to over and over again. And yours too, Jennifer. It was really quite astounding. And I have to tell you that meditation came out of a song, which is called No Fear. <laughs> it's like a bridge to a song. You know, and it's really about our desires of, of, you know, really treating them as, as a mama bear would a baby bear, you know, of really protecting them and loving them and really nurturing them to full manifestation. I think we give up on them way too early. Thank you. That full manifestation, nurturing them into full manifestation. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, one of the things I, I, as you're talking, I'm realizing that I've learned from spirit is, uh, like everybody else, I have doubt. You know, can I do what I feel guided to do? Can I do what I feel inspired to do? Do I have the resources inside and out? Uh, all of that, of course. And one of the things I've learned that's been so helpful to me is, I, I really have learned to put it on the altar. A Course in Miracles has a booklet 
that's in a, one of the addendums to the course. It's just a tiny little booklet and it's called the Song of Prayer. And in the Song of Prayer, what Jesus talks about is he says, it, it, these are my words, my little distillation. He basically says the greatest gift that you can give to your creator is to place everything that you think you want or you think you need, you think you'd like, or even to me, what you don't like and you want to be different, you, uh, you want it to stop, just give it all to spirit to handle. Just really give it to spirit. And to me, when I give it to spirit, <clears throat> I'm giving it to my own higher Holy Spirit self, not some separate entity in a distant land far away, but to my own very highest, uh, most magnificent, magnificent self, which is the very living, loving presence of God. And so I'm handing it over and I'm taking the needs of my personality out of it. I'm taking the endless wanting, craving, needing out of it. And I'm just in, in let my life be an expression of the love of God. And these are the things that my heart desires. You know, I, 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 I like to break down the word desire into like, I took French for four and a half years when I was in school. And let, maybe this is the only good thing I got from it. But if you take the word de, which means of, and sire, which is like the father, desire, it's to me, the des deep desires of the heart are of the father, of the, the creator. And that's what I'm energizing. I don't have a desire to have a new car. I have a desire to live my life in, a, in an expansive, magnificent, pure way that's inspiring to other people as well as myself. I have a desire to let go of every false belief I've ever had. I, I have a desire to let go of every resentment I've ever held on to and energized. And, and I've had desire to see beauty in everything. And I could go on and on about my desires because I've learned to energize my desires mm -hmm. like Jennifer's talking about and to really put energy into them. And people will say to me on a regular basis, especially people who don't know me, like if I say, oh, I'm, I'm going to be doing this or that. And they're like, well, how are you going to do that? How's that ever going to happen? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I, I don't know. That hasn't been given to me yet. That part I don't know yet. And they're like, what is she talking about? She's going to do something. She doesn't know how she's going to do it. I'm like, yeah, I'll be given that when that part is needed. Right now, my job is just to hold this basket and Spirit's going to fill the basket. And I, I really have come to live my life that way. And it, it's so much easier. And, you know, my mind gets in the way and says, oh, that just feels like it's not going to work. And then I think, well, why would I say that? I'm not in charge of whether it works or doesn't work. Mm -hmm. My job is just to know it's happening. It's happening. And that, that it's, it, that's the precipitation. You know? Yeah. And choosing it again and again, you know, because we, we tend to just say, and, and that to me, you were talking so beautifully about that of keeping that desire pure in its first form, you know, that when it came to you is the purity of that desire. It needs to be held by you by me, you know, to, to grow like a beautiful flower because it will develop into something way more than you can ever anticipate because spirit is the doer. You, that's why it's important to keep choosing. Yes, exactly. I had a desire to do these services years ago, years ago. I, I felt the calling in my heart, you know, and my personality was like, really, what do you, what do you just want to work seven days a week? You just want to like, give it a rest, take some time off, you know? <laughs> no, I feel this desire that people need to get together online on a Sunday in a service from around the world and have it be, uh, you know, simple and open and available and connected and interactive. And then, you know, here's Zoom, right? And then, uh, cause I, I didn't 
you know, I didn't see Zoom happening, but here's Zoom. And then I thought, I just can't add one more thing. And then when the virus happened, I said, I'm doing it. And, and to be honest, my wonderful staff said, you know, that's too much for us right now. We really can't do it. And I, just, I basically just said to him, I know, I know, I know, but we're still going to do it anyway. They're like, no, really, we really don't want to take this on. I'm like, I know, I know, I do understand that, you know, and, and I'm just so glad that they were able to get over it and figure out how we could do this because it's a beautiful thing and I'm really glad we're doing it. Me too. <laughs> And we're going to be finishing up this breakout in just a minute. So I want to see, does anybody else have anything they'd like to share before we, because uh, we've still got another minute or so. I would like to, I would like to say one thing that really stood out for me from Jennifer Russell, uh, the new faith currency. And, you know, uh, when we think about currency, you don't think of faith as a currency. And I think you know, it, it really stood out for me because where I am right now and where I have been saying my, I came from the abundant source. My source is abundant. So I cannot be anything but abundant. And I need that faith to carry me on. And I, uh, th this message is so strong for me because that is my faith currency that I want to hold on to and to carry it. And, you know, so things get created from nothing. Absolutely. That's what we, we are remembering. <laughs> we are remembering. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, that's beautiful. Thank you, Phil. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because I had the same feeling when uh, you said it, Tim. And good Lord, faith is a, is the it is such a currency. It is with faith, of course, all things are possible. They really are, especially when what we are looking to accomplish or to bring into manifestation is uh, something that will bring benefit to all beings and be an expression of your heart, of our loving heart. It's beautiful. Yeah. Absolutely. So uh, at this point in the service, I can let you know that we are going to be wrapping it up. We've got another song from Clay. But before we do that, I'd like to ask Jennifer, if people, do you want to say anything about something that you've got coming up uh, and how people can contact you? Absolutely. Um, I would really like everybody to start listening to the Morning Light Meditations, where you can just hook up with that by just going to angelsofabundanceascensionacademy.com, or if you want a shorthand version, it's just angels.aa.com. Um, and right there on the front page you'll see a place to hook up we're also starting it's an opportunity to transform your money blueprint master course called angels of abundance and it's become one of my signature courses and it's just so powerful we're actually starting it this week so if you're interested get a hold of me right away which is not hard to do i'm the only jennifer ruth russell so um, you can find me <laughs> with the Ruth and somebody, Donna Gershman, our friend said, when you start using your middle name, your whole life will change. And that's really true. He, she was reading my calm or something. <laughs> and that's truly what happened. Uh, so thank you for asking. That's what's going on right now. Great, great. And feel free to put anything in the chat. Okay. Uh, what about you, Clay? Anything you'd like to tell us about how we can get your music or... Anything like that? Oh, we're not hearing you. You look like you're unmuted, but I'm not hearing you. Well, oh, you, you, you there you are. 
Not yet. I, I have some projects that are in gestation. There's a lot, I had a lot of projects that I finished or in, in the uh, midst of finishing. And once that's done, then I'll be able to get back to, um, to music making very, very soon. But as of yet, um, I, I'm in gestation with that pregnancy. Okay, great. Um, and I, you're going to give us a song in just a minute, but before you do, I want to uh, I want to make a couple of announcements. And I also would like to say, Clay, I think you can turn your vocal microphone up just a little bit. Um, and so uh, this is a point where we uh, invite you to make an offering. We take a collection to invite you to become a tither. Uh, we. The, the, the staff of the Power of Love Ministry works to be able to put on this service every Sunday. They are a paid staff. They're not a volunteer staff. Although we do have volunteers here today. We have Phil and we have Christine who are volunteering to help. But we also have GJ who's here. He's coming in on his Sunday to work for a number of hours to help us out. And he's part of our staff, so God bless him for doing that. He does such a good job for us. And then we have many other people on the staff who do the artwork and the recordings and the websites and the emails and all those different pieces that it takes to do something like this. And uh, you can, one of the easiest ways for you to begin uh, tithing to make a one-time donation or recurring monthly donation is to sign up for our text messages. And so you can do that at acimtexts.com, acimtexts.com. And you can pick any amount that you'd like to donate one time or on a monthly recurring basis. And you can get our inspirational text messages. So that's a, just a wonderful way to, uh, I like to say, embrace two, uh, two birds with one hug. You can give a donation and you can get the text messages. Um, and I also will mention that starting Friday is my Stop Playing Small retreat. I'm doing the retreat online. This is my second time doing it online. The first time was tremendous it was just tremendous scott was there maybe scott would uh scott i don't know if we probably can we get you unmuted i don't have the power to unmute I, oh there you go i just scott. unmuted myself can you oh, hear me yes any any recommendations for attending the stop playing small retreat scott um oh. absolutely um I, I'm caught a little off guard, but my heart will speak. It, it was incredible. Um, I, it made a tremendous change in my life. And um, if you're on the fence, call me or someone else. And I, I will just tell you, it, 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 it was tremendously worth it. And uh, being spread out over the two weeks gave me time to integrate tremendous change that I made in, in, in two weeks. And now I'm, I'm much braver. And also, um, I let go of so many false beliefs about myself, and um, I'm out there working on my my music and um, getting ready to date, and like like all these things that I didn't think I was worthy enough to do, I'm I'm doing, and um, it's just wonderful. Oh, I'm so glad. Yes, it was it was just it was a lot of fun, and it will be a lot of fun again. But it's also very deep. I mean, you really have to do some real work, and we do it in eight different sessions, uh, and uh, it, it's deeply transformative. So if you feel like you've been procrastinating, you've been resisting and reluctant, f reluctant to follow your heart's desires and to really pour your energy into them. You feel like you're aware that you have mental and emotional blocks that feel like they're limiting you, standing in your way. We're going to break through them in a gentle yet powerful and really productive way. 
and uh, we have a wonderful community of people uh, signed up already so come and join us we have payment plans and you know what if you need an even extended payment plan we'll figure that out for you we always are willing to do that for anybody so i wanted to just let you know stop playing small retreat starts this friday and uh Christine will put the link into the chat there, but you can go to jenniferhadley.com and you can see it um, right there uh, on the home page. Stop playing small. So now, without further ado, let's go to uh, one more song from Clay. Can you hear? Yes. Can you hear? All right. Um, I, this song is, uh, my story of what it would be like if, if Jesus Christ came back right now, like, what would he really say? Make way, make way, here comes the king. Gonna make it right, he's gonna solve everything. Rose petals and flowers blown across the street. Doubters and believers together line up to me. The lame man, the sick. The wise, the stupid, and the dumb. They're trying to get a piece of him before there's left none. But the king looked aside, saying, No, there's something not right. Expecting me to heal the bitten leg that I did not bite. You gotta learn what you don't want to fix to please just don't break. Everybody nodded like they got it, but then one by one they sang, hey, hey, hey. You're a guy, you're a guy, please fix the rising seas. And while you're at it, why don't you stop war and fix the economy? But he said, I'm a show one, not a fixer. Only you can make it right, but I can't show you what you just won't see. Hey, saw Job and Moses show up in Ezekiel too. They're trying to eat the wind from a crowd that's on track to lose. And yet kings and presidents still knelt and gave them their lists. Like if they got naughty, they just might not get their Christmas gift. Hey, 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 you're a guy, you're a guy, please fix the rising seas. And while you're at it, why don't you stop war and fix the economy? But it said, I'm a showboy, not a fixer. Don't try to turn me into some little elixir, cause I can't show you what you just won't see. Hey, you're a guy, you're a guy, please fix the rising seas. And while you're at it, why don't you stop war and fix the economy? But it said, I'm a show one, not a fixer. Only you can make it right. But I can't show you what you just won't see. Hey, Jet Set by the go was asking for water from wine. A late taxpayer even asked him to go back 10 days in time. Dreams, schemes, and favors. Silly prayers and requests of all flavors. Will land it handy at the foot of this poor man. But he said, no, 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 this ain't mine. 
No, oh, oh, this ain't mine. This ain't mine. Ha, 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 in your guy. Your guy, please fix the rising seas. And while you're at it, why don't you stop war? Fix the economy. But I said I'm a show, not a fixer. Only you can make it right, but I can't show you what you just won't see. Hey, your rock guy, your rock guy, please fix the rising seas. But it said I'm a show one, not a fixer. Only you can make it right. But I can't show you what you just won't see. Hey, hey, hey. Hope that came across. <clears throat> Thank you, Clay. Oh, I'm so glad you accepted the invitation and came this Sunday. Wouldn't have missed it for the world. Thank you so much yeah. for extending it. We look forward to having you back. Yeah. Great. I would love to. Yes, we will plan on that. And Phil's going to take us home with a prayer. Phil. Thanks, Jennifer, and thanks, everyone. So let's place our hand on our heart once again and just be in our heart and express our gratitude. We're grateful and thankful to our new currency of unconditional love and faith. Grateful to identify and choose our heart's desire, knowing that we are supported, we are not alone, we are supported 24-7, we let all of, all of the fears and all of the attachment to outcome go. We're letting, placing it all on the holy altar and allowing the unconditional love, a new currency of faith to do what it always does and knows the best how to do it. We are so grateful, grateful for this awareness, grateful for this blessing, grateful for this knowledge. And we share this blessing with everyone because we are one with them. And in grace and gratitude, we say, Amen. Amen, Amen, Amen. Thank you, Phil. Thank, Thank you, Clay. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Faith. Thank you, um, GJ. Thank you, Christine. Thank you, everyone, for showing up. God bless you. Mwah. Have a great week. <laughs>